Do you ever feel overwhelmed by information while you're trying to do a task and there's all this other stuff coming at you and you're like, I need a place to put that? I sure do. Well, this Apple Notes secret can help you with finding a place to put that without breaking your flow of everything else that you were already trying to do. Hey, I'm David. I'm an honors psychology student at UBC and I'm a professional interneter. That's what it sounds like it is. I think that psychology and technology are both really useful and can be really, really useful when you put them together sometimes. And I find myself finding ways to do that, to put these psychology and technology things together and they end up helping me. So I want to share them in case they can help you too. So this is my adaptation of a trick that the author Cal Newport uses to deal with information overwhelm. He calls it workingmemory.txt because he likes to keep his version of this in a text edit file on the desktop. But I've found that there's a quick little prompt that you can use with Apple Notes on a Mac that does this even more seamlessly than just doing it in a text edit file. So first I'll do a quick demo of what this looks like. Then I'll say a bit more about when and why this is useful. And finally, I'll show you how to set it up. You can do it my way in Apple Notes, but you know, you'll also be able to do the text edit way from Cal himself if you end up preferring that. But I think there's, there's, there's subtleties that makes the Apple Notes version worth doing. So here's what we do. As we're working on something cognitively demanding and something pops into our head, we can take a quick little note and then shift right back to what we were doing. Okay. We can put it away just like that real easily and say I was thinking of another idea here, which is the next step. I need to do pop down there, pop down there, open it up. Isn't that neat? And so the thought that we jot down there may or may not be related to the tax that we're working on right now. Like you can see here, I jotted down one thought that is kind of related to this, but didn't feel quite like something I wanted to put in the text itself, even though these are notes here too. They're kind of notes that I want to be a permanent log versus these kind of middle thoughts that come up. So that first one here was one of those. Second one is totally unrelated. And I'm going to attend to both of these later. And again, you can just quit out of it. You could do this with the text edit file, but summoning the text edit file, uh, there's, you know, there's quick ways to do it, but uh, not as nice as just this little corner command. That's pretty neat. By putting the little working memory thought, the little middle thought you had there, you can save more of your real working memory and you can just expand it a little bit more because this is one of the areas where we can get a bottleneck as we're thinking. A quick side note here about working memory. If you're a psych person, you'll already know this, but still. Working memory isn't just about holding bits of information for the short term. It's about manipulating those bits of information to do hopefully useful things with them. It's the difference between being able to remember a string of seven numbers, a phone number, and being able to do something like taking that string of seven numbers and thinking, okay, could I say that string of seven numbers backwards? Which would be meaningless, right? But there's real life examples where being able to manipulate that information that you're struggling to hold on to can be useful. If you dump some of that information into something like this, using a quick note that keeps coming back up, the same note whenever you go back to that little corner, then you can offload a bit of that, work with the bits that you can use in your mind and be like, okay, I need that one more bit and grab it from there. You could of course do this other ways. You could use a post-it note, you could write it down on a little journal, you could do bullet journaling type things. And you could combine all of those other ones and, and try different versions of it yourself. But this version has been working really well for me. And if you're somebody who likes to keep most things digital and have the advantage of being able to copy and paste bits as you go, this can work pretty well. So when and why is this useful? Having more of our biological and psychological working memory as opposed to our technological working memory. Hello, I am a robot. Having more of our biological and psychological working memory available to us, that lets us do even more difficult work that requires a lot of attention. Things like coordinating multiple pieces of information so that you can synthesize them and get the necessary details so that you can be precise 
about the information that you're trying to relay to somebody, say in a technical report, or an email, or an essay, or a blog post, or an important text message. Now, it's also useful because it's very difficult to finish anything when there's too much information coming at you at once. But often, in a work context especially, sometimes also in a school context, sometimes also in your personal life, information that's coming at you can be important even if it's not important to the task that you're doing right this second you might need that information later and so using this quick note this working memory extension this working memory txt can be useful for helping grab that information so that you can decide later whether or not it's actually something you need and also if it's something you might even need later as in maybe like in a minute you might need that information put it here and then you can grab it later it's easier than trying to hold that information in your head because our heads are not supercomputers relative to monkeys yes but relative to a supercomputer which is what these computers are at this point it's not as good can't store that stuff as well and of course part of the solution to this can be putting practices that make it so that you're not having incoming information from the outside coming at you when you're trying to do deep work and pay careful attention to something so that might mean something like batching the times when you're gonna check your emails and your different notifications from the different apps and stuff, you know, at whatever frequency works for you and your employer. But then there's this whole other category of incoming that's from the inside, right? It's not like you can truly pause the notifications that are coming from your own mind in between those kind of middle thoughts like I was talking about. For those, this is especially helpful. This ability to have those little thoughts that come up and kind of inevitably are gonna come up to some extent, throw them here. And then the rest of your brain can stop thinking about them and you can return to the task at hand. This is also useful when you have thoughts that are not related to the project at hand, but related to something else, you're gonna need them later. Put them in this document. This is also a great place to help yourself think out loud about things, kind of like any journaling would be, I just like having it in this digital context. It's easier to copy and paste. Here's a little example. Well, say I was making a video about some of Cal Newport's ideas about information overload. I might go and try to grab a few quotes from things that he said about this in the past to incorporate it. And I might end up rewording those quotes. So maybe I don't wanna put this in my actual script for the video right away. So what could I do? Okay, I've opened up an article of Cal talking about this. This seems useful. Copy that and then Open my little quick note, my little working memory. Put it in there. Okay, put those in quotes so I don't forget. Uh, and okay, maybe I want a little bit more. Uh, this is in the way, let's get it out of there. Okay, let's see, what else did he say about it? Right, this is a source article from the New Yorker that he wrote about it. Okay. I think this is useful information that also relates to this. Let's throw that in there too. And so now I have those for later. So I might use that, I might use that space to think through those ideas a little bit more. Again, I could put those in my like ongoing notes, say if this was about the script instead of about another project. I could also talk through it here and delete it later. That's fine, that's an option too. But what's different is this quick note works ubiquitously on top of all of the different programs. If I were to put it in Logsic, so say I had the same quote here, and then say I wanna go back there, it's gone. Whereas if I open up the working memory doc and I have these notes here, I want to go in log sick and make another thought there. And then I want to go back to Chrome. Look at that. It's right there on top of everything else. You can do things like this with stickies too, but can you summon the stickies as easily? It's kind of sort of if you're going to use Alfred or Spotlight or something, but this is better. I think it's the best thing I've found that does something like this such a cool thing this little corner okay very important caveat to all of this though in order for this to be useful and an ongoing useful kind of working memory thing you need to clear it out really every day that's what cal does that's what i've done it helps me a lot i think because it's a blank slate it's different than my to-do list where i can sometimes take things that initially were in the working memory and be like okay i haven't dealt with that today it's gonna go in the long list but it's not in this thing that I'm gonna keep working on as a very temporary kind of file. Think of it like some kind of piece of paper that you're gonna crumple up at the end of the day and throw away. That's what the working memory works really well for because that's how the real thing works too. We don't want it to work forever. There's a reason our mind doesn't work like that by default. Okay, so 
How do you set this up? Depending on how new your computer is, you might have this set up by default. I think it comes set up this way on new computers. But let's say you turned it off. I don't know. Either way, I'll show you how to set it up from scratch, just in case. So the first thing we want to do is assign the bottom right of our screen to open up a Quick Notes in Apple Notes. How we do that is we go to System Preferences, and then we go to Mission Control, and then we click Hot Corners down here. And then within that, you can assign any of the four corners to do a couple of different things, but we're just going to talk about the Quick Note here. So if it's not already saying Quick Note, just open up this drop down and choose Quick Note. That's all there is to it. You could do this with any note taking app you want. You could do it with a piece of paper, many options. The difference with this method is it'll stay on top of the other windows, which you don't always want, but sometimes that's useful. And it's also just kind of fun. Just drag your mouse down there. So use another app if that works better for you or do it in Apple Notes like I do using this quick note. Another neat thing about doing it this way, it syncs across your devices. So sometimes I'll have my working memory where I've jotted some stuff down during the morning on my computer and then I'm going to go transit uh, to work in a lab. And then while I'm on the bus, I can just open up my phone and that same file is there. I can add some new information to it. I can check whether I should clear it off. It works in your devices. Neat. Again, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, but if you're going to watch a video like this, I'm going to assume that you are already. And yeah, there's other apps that also do that. Drafts would be the other best contender for something like this, only because it opens up so quickly, just like this does. But yeah, I would say Apple Notes is the best at doing this from what I've seen. It's the best way to implement the working memory.txt idea that Cal Newport uses. Give it a try. It really is helpful, I think, especially if you're working on things where you have to juggle a bunch of information. Yeah, the Apple ecosystem is, is just really something else. I made another video where I talk about how Apple Reminders can integrate with TickTick using that voice capture feature that's just so good with Siri. You can check that video out there. More often than not, if you want something to work really well, using one of the core Apple apps as an intermediary is very useful. Yeah, tinker around with that stuff. If you end up finding any cool kind of workarounds or you want to share any with me, please do tell me. I would love to hear about that kind of stuff. Uh, most of the things that I find out are not from scratch, right? Somebody else told me. Cal basically told me about this and then I noticed a little feature. So yeah, please tell me if you find cool stuff like this. Thank you for watching the video. Like it if you liked it. If you're new here and you want to see more stuff like this, uh, you could subscribe and then you'll see the next one. Cool.